morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Alessandro Gaggio. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I know that uh, every one of you is tired. Uh, we are approaching lunch, so I will try to be as fast and clear as possible. Today, I want to show you how we created a simple yet effective serverless notification system using uh, AWS services. Okay. okay. It's working. Okay. It's me. <laughs> Uh, I'm Alessandro Gaggia, I'm the head of software development in B Sharp. We are a company in Pavia, and uh, these are my contacts. So uh, after the presentation, if you have any doubts, info, information, or you want to call me for a beer, uh, just call me, okay? I will try to respond uh, as soon as possible. So let's start with the problem, what we wanted to do. We have uh, a main product, which is Nuvolari Smart Backup, okay? It's a great product, but we have a lot of code. So we are starting to uh, split its code base in uh, several microservices. So we had a previous solution for a notification system, which was based on a combination of uh, um, Redis plus Action Cable. Action Cable was written you know, for Ruby, okay? But it was based on a server. So uh, because we are now we are working with microservices, uh, it wasn't a um, feasible solution anymore. Okay, so uh, just a couple of words about Nuvolari. And Nuvolari is a backup and disaster recovery uh, software, as a, uh, software uh, as a service uh, application. It can do uh, live backup and recovery from a web console. It has one click recovery, file level recovery, and it can do um, application consistent backup. So imagine. Uh, all this stuff uh, divided into microservices. And uh, each of these operations needs to send a notification to the user about its state. The idea is that we want to integrate something seamlessly, maybe reusing part of the code. We wanted to authenticate the calls because we're working with a product, with clients, so we don't want to send clear information. And we also uh, want to be able to group notification by something, for example, by a room, because of course uh, we don't want to send notification to people that don't want to receive those notifications. And uh, it must be something simple and reusable because it's serverless. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, our main uh, area of expertise is AWS. So we search in AWS and uh, we found that in 2018, AWS uh, released um, a, a WebSocket API for API Gateway, which was perfect for us because uh, it's managed by uh, AWS itself. So it's very simple to integrate to uh, an already existing application. Also, we used a JWT token to pass encrypted information, but we will see it later. And we also use a SAM template to make it possible to um, um, release this infrastructure with just one click, okay? So to make it very simple to reuse it. Our solution. Okay, I want to uh, describe our solution in three, in three different steps. Okay, I want to start simple. So we start by just making a simple WebSocket connection and make some client speak to each other. Then we start to divide this information by rooms and then we add authentication and the possibility to send information directly from a backend. You will see that this is very, very, very simple and this is the power of the solution. Uh, to make it work, uh, you have to go to the A AWS services uh, uh, and search for the API Gateway uh, console panel. You have to create a new API and search uh, for a, a WebSocket API using the protocol switch. You can select an API name, but the most important part, uh, you want to select the root select on expression, which is request body action by default. The action value represents the key of the JSON file that defines the name of the root that you have to call in order to send a message through API Gateway, and we will see it later clearly. Then we have the default routes, which are connect and disconnect. These routes are used directly by API Gateway to manage connection and disconnection from the WebSocket channel. Okay, these are the main actors. You can see that it's very, very simple as an architecture. We have a client, which can be a simple HTML page. 
We have API Gateway, which is already configured to work uh, for a WebSocket. And we have three different routes, connect, disconnect, and send message, which is the one that we created to send the actual message. And the connection table. The connection table is a simple DynamoDB table that contains the connection IDs of all the clients that tries to connect to our WebSocket channel through API Gateway. So the idea is that um, a client requests a WebSocket connection to API Gateway, okay? Then API Gateway call um, our routes directly, so it calls connect, and connects check the connection table. If the connection ID is already there, then it means that the client is already connected to a WebSocket channel. Otherwise, it creates a row in the connection table with the connection ID of the client. Then, okay, it opens the WebSocket connection for us, and now, if we send a message, we call for the send message, send message checks all the uh, connection ID inside the connection table and send the message to all of them. We will see that WebSocket doesn't support broadcasting, so we have to loop uh, through each client in order to send the message to all of them. Okay, we send the message to all the client, and so all the client can speak to each other. So we created, uh, in this first example, a simple basic chat. But it's very simple to do that. We just use three lambda. Okay, by definition, as I said, uh, a chat uh, send message to all users, but we want to do something a little better. As I said, we want to group uh, this information by room ID. And this is very simple. Also in this case, what we want to do is just add a room ID column inside the connection table. And as I said, we don't support directly broadcast, so we have to loop uh, through each client. And also we add root 53 in this case, and we can see it here, which is more clear. We add root 53 because with root 53 we can create a custom domain name for the URL that API Gateway gives you when you create a new API. This way, as I said, we created some template, so we want something that you can click and directly create a new infrastructure. By doing this, we decouple the creation of the new infrastructure with the client code, because root 53 has a single URL uh, value that remains the same all the time. Instead, API Gateway can change its uh, URL every time uh, we deploy um, a new couple of these uh, infrastructure. In this case, we call the send message again. We have uh, already the channel open, and we can see that we use the room ID uh, retrieving it uh, from uh, the connection value of the first client that calls for the room. And with that, uh, we can filter all the connection with the scan operation, retrieve all the user with the same room ID, and send a message to all the client of that specified room. So also in this case, it's incredibly simple. And uh, just for your information, this is the code <laughs> that you need to use uh, in, uh, in your clients. Just a couple of lines of codes. With the first line, you create a new JavaScript WebSocket object by passing, for example, the custom domain name, websocket.nuvolari.com. We also add a, um, a stage value, but is optional. And we pass the information for the connection as query parameter. This is another problem in the sense that uh, later, we want to encrypt this information because now they are clear. But this is the only way to pass information for a connection because WebSocket doesn't support custom headers, so you can't uh, hide information that way. Then, to send a message, you just call a simple JavaScript function, and you call send with a JSON structure, and you can see here the action value I talked before, send message, which is the name of the route you have to call. and then the simple message you want to send. It's incredibly simple, okay? Now we want to do something more. At first, we want to send information directly by our backend, because this is a notification system, not a chat. And then we will see how to authenticate those calls. We also add an SQS queue in order to decouple the messages that are sent by our main product and the rest of our architecture, because you know, we want also to manage maybe dead letter queues uh, or, you know, have a control over the messages that are sent by our application to make it more robust. 
Okay, you can see that uh, Nuvolari, our main product, is sending the message with user ID and room ID to the SQS queue. The main idea here, here is to use the same payload as you would expect from API Gateway. This way, when the same Lambda function we use from API Gateway receives the message, and we can do that because SQS can trigger a Lambda function by itself when it receives the message, by receiving the same payload, the send message treat this message as it was uh, uh, sent by API Gateway itself. So the rest of the passage is the same. It checks for the room ID, retrieve the users, and send the message to all the clients of the specified room. It's incredibly simple, also in this case. To um, authenticate the user, what we do is just encrypt the information for the connection string with a JWT token. Inside this token, we put the user ID, the room ID, and for another layer of security, we put another token we, that we have defined before that is encrypted with bcrypt. The same token is set in another table, and maybe here is more clear. We have an authentication table that contains the user ID and a bcrypt uh, encrypted token, which is created by Nuvolari whenever a user logs into the application and asks for opening a WebSocket connection for notification. So, when we send the token to an authorizer, and an authorizer is a special Lambda function that you can define for the connection operation. And it's called automatically by API Gateway when you want to connect. So it's, an, it's a layer of security that authenticates the calls. This Lambda function decodes the JWT token with a secret that is contained in environment variable, so no secret are passed in a clear way. It retrieves the bcrypted token and, and check that bcrypted token with the one inside the authentication table. If the signature match, we have an opening connection for that particular user. So when the user is connected, we open the channel, and then the rest is the same as before. Okay, very, very, very simple. So I knew before that there were, uh, will be connect connection issues, so I prepared the video, of course, I knew that. And uh, in this video, <laughs> you can see that uh, we are creating a recovery operation from our tool. And we will see uh, these that are notifications that are sent by our microsystem. The um, clever idea here was to add also a type value for notification. So if the notification has the same value, we create an animation to define uh, you know, the progress of the operation. But if you receive a different notification type, and the time is accelerated a bit, let's let it finish, we see different notification. But it's not only that. Behind the scene, we use the same architecture to define the state of our uh, step function that define the microservices. So the idea is that the same steps are operative steps and are sent by push notification with this system. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much. If you have a question, please follow us. If you are, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, just a moment, please. If you are more interested in this topic, we will re release an in depth article on this uh, next week uh, with code example and a more in-depth explanation of all the steps. So please follow our website, www.bsharp.it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alessandro.